I now call to order the La Cavasu City Council regular meeting on Tuesday, January 22nd, 2024 at 5.30 p.m. We'll have an invocation from Pastor David Jackson with Hilltop Community Church, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance from Christine Watson Buntmeyer with the Closed Closet. Let's have a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the opportunity to serve you. We thank you for these men and women who are serving our community, Lord. We pray that you bless them. Pray that they uh, make decisions in unity for the best of our community, Lord. Uh, pray for all those who serve us, and may you bless them. Thank you, Jesus, for this opportunity, and uh, we humbly come before you and give you praise. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I want to thank you, Mr. Mayor and City Council, for having me today to speak. And I just want to say our mission of the Clothes Closet, the Clothes Closet is a place to provide free clothing and a place to be restoring hope, worthiness, respect, dignity by utilizing existing relationships and accessing other community resources to further help individuals and families obtain needed services. I know that's a long-winded one, but it says it all right there. Um, the Closed Closet Havasu Hope Resource Center is a place where we meet people where they're at, whether they're just needing clothes, ready for rehab, or wait, wanting to get a better edu education, etc. We have collaborated with other organizations that can help in areas regarding medical, mental health, veteran services, personal welfare, including help with domestic violence situation, housing, education, and career directions. We are not here to recreate the resources that are already in place. We are here to work in unity. We are utilizing great teams of resources, collaborating between agencies and organizations that people are giving a warm handoff and not left stuck with the dead end. People's struggles are real. The plans for the showers are in the process, which is a much needed for our community because we have no place for people that are working to take showers. And so we're in the system to hopefully be done really shortly. In December alone, we helped 303 individuals go through the clothes closet. And that's not including the 50 people that we helped serve for Christmas dinner that was living in their cars and motels and stuff. We also um, did a big care fair, which we helped 149 people the first Saturday of December, which we had free haircuts. We had all the services there to help people with um, housing, insurance, uh, free phones, um, counseling, we had Catholic Charities there. We had a lot of different resources and job applications and job resume help. In January 1st to January 23rd, this month alone, we helped 223 people so far this month. We've had a lot of people come through our doors, whether they're just in small crisis or large crisis. We've had to call the crisis care team. We've had to call Faith and Grace to come. We've had to call Catholic Charities. We've had to call United Way. And they are coming through our doors on a regular basis. And we have people living in their cars with their children right now because they cannot afford a place to live in this town. And they're working folks. So I'm hoping that our showers will become available sooner than later so we can at least get them showers to go to work and smell nice and get better jobs. So thank you so much for having me and I'm hoping that we are going to be able to work together more and help our community. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Christine. And thank you for all you do for the community. Uh, item four on the agenda is roll call. Uh, Ms. Williams, will you call the roll? Council members Nancy Campbell. Here. Michelle Lynn. Here. Jenny Koch. Here. Jim Dolan. Here. David Lane. Here. Vice Mayor Cameron Moses. Here. Mayor Kalshihi. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Item five on the agenda is the consent agenda. Would anyone on the council like to remove any of the items uh, for separate discussion? Vice Mayor. Yes. Motion. 
Yes, please. Move to approve the consent agenda as presented. Second. second. We have a motion from Councilwoman Koch and a second from Councilman Dolan. Is there any uh, further discussion? Hearing none, we're ready for vote. Uh, Mayor Sheehy? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries seven to zero. Thank you. Item six is correspondence, communications, petitions, announcements, and the city manager's report. Item 6.1 is to announce any vacancies on the Cavasu City Boards, Commissions, and Committees. Uh, Ms. Williams? Thank you. There are several vacancies on the Cavasu City Boards, Committees, and Commissions. The following is a listing of those vacancies. Board of Adjustment, two regular members and two alternate members, and the Parks and Recreation Advisory Board, one student member. Anyone interested can pick up a packet at City Hall, and they are also available on the city's website at lhcaz.gov. Thank, Thank you. you. Item 6.2 is the city manager report. Mr. Knudsen. Uh, thank you, Vice Mayor. Good evening. Uh, good evening, Council. Um, would like to mention that uh, um, Kelly Gary, our city attorney, is not with us. She's um, here physically, as well as uh, Mayor Sheehy. Uh, they are both here virtually, but uh, they're attending a Water Smart Conference in Phoenix uh, for a couple days uh, this week. Um, also joining them is, is uh, Bill Gain, who is our water superintendent. I believe Thelak Fernando is our, our wastewater superintendent, and he, he's a attending the conference as well. And one of our project managers, I believe Jason Hart is there. I probably left off one of our team, but um, we're thankful for the, them to get together with uh, about five other communities across Arizona and identify uh, uh, innovations for um, water and uh, bring some of those ideas back to Lake Havasu. So i uh, like to also congratulate our six police cadets and the three advisors who participated in the Chandler Tactical Competition this year. Uh, during the event, they were able to challenge themselves in the following events. There was a, a sniper or long-range rifle shoot, a pistol competition, uh, a well che welfare check scenario, unknown alarm, a terrorist attack scenario, and a narcotics raid. They also held uh, uh, walk-on events that did not need a prior sign-up. So some of our cadets also participated in an obstacle course, uh, SWAT fitness, tactical hatchet throw, and tactical relay. Our very own Detective Tara Flagg uh, competed with the other cadets, uh, cadet advisors uh, throughout the state in the obstacle course challenge, and she placed in first. Uh, the cadets uh, um, also, the cadets, in addition to that, uh, uh, the wonderful achievement, also achieved the following awards, which is uh, fourth place in the state of Arizona in the narcotic raid and first place in axe throwing. So congratulations uh, to the uh, cadets. They did us proud again this year. I'd like to encourage the public to come check out the City Hall lobby this week, uh, preferably during business hours. <laughs> uh, the Havasu Stitchers uh, displays uh, beautiful quilts to promote their upcoming quilt show. And if you come into City Hall in the lobby, you'll see uh, a variety of wonderful um, artistic uh, um, uh, renditions of the quilts that they have there. Uh, they are promoting their upcoming quilt show that will be held at the Aquatic Center on February 2nd and 3rd. And that will be from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Uh, they have more information on their website, uh, habasustitchers.com. Uh, the Lake Havasu City Fire Department introduced the new, it's called a Lucas 3 chest compression device uh, to the public. We, uh, we put it on uh, social media today. So there's a video to, to see the demonstration and a much more conversation than, than I ha I'll have this evening. Um, but uh, technology is advancing um, and, uh, and is uh, saving lives. Uh, this uh, device allows for hands-free compression, allowing our paramedics to provide other critical care and life-saving interventions to the patient. Uh, it is applied easily within seconds, and it is safer uh, for, employ for employees performing CPR uh, when they're keeping a distance uh, during defibrillation, defibrillation and especially during transport. Uh, compared to manual compressions, the Lucas 3 delivers up to 60% more efficient compressions to the patient. Uh, we're excited to have this new piece of equipment in our in efforts to improve and increase the services that we provide to the community. For more, infor more information on this device and uh, other efforts that are taking place uh, in the fire department, please contact the fire department at 855-1141. And please check out the video on social media. Um, it is a, a wonderful demonstration. <coughs> Excuse me. And lastly, uh, please uh, join us at the community center on Monday, January 29th, 
from 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Uh, we'll be hosting an open house uh, that uh, will be presented by Michael Baker International and Lake Havasu City. Uh, we'll be sharing information and seeking feedback from the public on the second bridge feasibility study. Uh, for more information, please contact Anthony Kozlowski at uh, 854-4278. So we'll have, have some broad conversations on the study area uh, and, and uh, what that means uh, for connections, either on the island side or the mainland side. And uh, again, we'll be seeking information from the, from the public at that event. And with that, uh, Vice Mayor, um, City Council, that uh, concludes my report. Thank you. Uh, we're going to move on to item seven, which are our uh, public hearings. During each of our public hearings, citizens will have an opportunity to address the city council with questions on any of the items that we have. But we ask that you make your way to the podium during the public hearing and state your name for the record. You are limited to time, and the city clerk will be monitoring with a light indicator box. Green means you have more time. Yellow means that you have one minute left. And red means your time is up during that discussion. You don't have to sign up to speak during a public hearing, but we do have... Uh, but if we do have students sign up, they will be called up first and you'll be opened up to others after that. We do encourage you to talk to us during those public uh, hearings. That way we can have a two-way conversation. There is another opportunity to, at the end of the meeting, to have a talk to the council during the call to the public where you can address the city council on any items within the jurisdiction of Lake Havasu City. But we cannot have a two-way conversation during that process. And I will review the guidelines for that when we get there. Um, we'll start now with 7.1, which is approved change request number one to Teller Software as a service agreement with Can-Am Technologies, Inc. for an impl implementation licensing and support of Teller Cash uh, receiving software. Hi, Jill. Thank you very much. Um, I'm filling in for Trina. I yeah. volunteered, actually. Great. So, this item is a change request or an amendment to the Teller Cash Receiving Software Agreement that Council approved in July. Um, we've had a couple of new um, software come on um, since then. We've got the, the Police Department Records um, Request System that does allow for taking payments. And then with the new MainStar, and, um, which is the building permit and business licensing software, we want to make sure that we use this new cash receiving system to take payments for that um, and allow for bulk scanning of the payments and the invoices associated with that. And it also includes um, licensing fees for the online payment portal. Um, so that will be a much more robust payment portal so that people can very conveniently make their payments online. The total additional cost for this fiscal year is $20,600. And that those funds are available in the Administrative Services Information Technology Budget for this fiscal year. Great. Thank you, Ms. Olson. Mm -hmm. uh, do any of our, my colleagues on council have any questions for Ms. Olson? No. Uh, that being, uh, we'll open this up. Uh, this is a public hearing. Do, does anyone in the public have any uh, questions for council? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing. Um, I'll open up my colleagues. Mr. Vice Mayor, motion? Yes. I move to approve change order request number one to Teller Software as a service agreement with Can-Am Technologies, Inc. and authorize the city manager to execute the change request on behalf of the city. Second. I have a uh, first from Councilman Lane and a second from Councilman Campbell. Was that you? Sorry. Yeah. Thank you. I wasn't paying. I wasn't looking. I just heard the voice. Thank you. It's all good. Any uh, further discussions? Okay, seeing, seeing none, we'll take the vote. Mayor Sheehy? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries seven to zero. Thank you. Thank you. Item 7.2 is to approve a use agreement with the Lake Havasu Metropolitan Planning Organization for office space in the transit building. Mr. Kozlowski. Uh, good evening, Vice Mayor, members of council. This is a three-year lease agreement uh, for the MPO to utilize office space within the transit facility. Um, we had many conversations with the FTA uh, as part of this agreement. Um, uh, the MPO board itself also approved uh, this uh, as well. Uh, and with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. 
Does anyone have questions for Mr. Kozlowski? Seeing none, we'll open up to the public. Anybody have any questions for council? Seeing none, we'll close it, bring it back to council. We're moving right along. Vice Mayor. Yes, please. Motion. Please. I move to approve the use agreement with the Lake Havasu Metropolitan Planning Organization for use of office space within the transit building at 900 London Bridge Road. Second. I have a first from Councilman Dolan and a second from Councilwoman Koch. Any other discussion? None. We'll bring it to vote. Mayor Sheehy? Aye. Thank you. Motion carries seven to zero. Thank you. Thank you. Item eight is our call to the public. Uh, again, this is our opportunity to address the City Council on any items within the jurisdiction of Lake Havasu City. During the call to the public, we can not have a two-way conversation, but we can listen intently uh, to any comments that you may have. We can respond to criticism if necessary. Your comments are limited to three minutes and the light indicator, indicator box next to Miss Williams will let you know by color when your time is up. Green means you have time, yellow means you have one minute remaining, and red means your minute has expired. You don't have to sign up but we uh, during the call of public, but we did have one citizen sign up. Uh, Sergey Heideman, would you like to make your way? <coughs> Thank you, sir. Good afternoon. My name's Heideman, Serge Heideman, council members, Mayor Sheehy, wherever you're at. Um, <laughs> my wife and I have lived on Blue Water Drive uh, for the last 30 years. And um, we find here in Lake Havasu a very uh, inviting environment. That's why we continue to stay here. My main reason for coming here is to thank the City Council and especially Mayor Sheehy for your involvement and your uh, effort in controlling or trying to control a state law that limits your uh, control of our um, uh, control for our neighborhoods. And um, I know you've been putting some thought and some time in it. Uh, those of us that are involved, we have Airbnbs next door to us, really appreciate it. The small packet you were given uh, shows one instance where back east, well, you know, at least in Texas anyways, um, a gentleman delivering wood was um, attacked and killed by a person that was renting a BNB. His neighbor was attacked, but not hurt severely. And it just showed up on the internet, and I thought you might be interested. Some of the drawbacks that we found is, having been there and having a BNB next door, we were never notified. Many people I've spoken to have never been notified or given any choice on what they want next door to the house that is zoned R1, that is now zoned C1, I guess. And um, it creates quite a, a, a problem for us. Um, this may be an isolated instance in, instance in Texas, but what we're trying to prevent is something like this from happening here or anything close to it. In that packet I gave you um, in Kahanapali, on the island of Maui, where my son lives and his family, uh, you can see these signs that are required to be posted. And these are big signs. We were there and I took pictures of them. And there's one for application. When the application is approved, the sign is taken down. And the uh, sign that this is uh, a now a BNB, but it has a person's name and a telephone number that if you're having problems, you don't have to go to the internet or call the police or something like that. So, so <clears throat> excuse me, it um, might be of uh, some ideas to you to be able to circumvent state law and or work with it and see if we can get some signs up for these people that are applying because like I said, most of us have never received anything from these applicants to turn their home into or their business into a BNB. Also, um, because I haven't been on top of this, sorry, um, my son lives on Maui, but I'm here to let you know I really appreciate it, and those of us that live around us appreciate what you put into it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hedeman. Are there any other citizens that would like to speak to council? 
Seeing none, we will close the... Go. Oh, come on up, Mr. Wisdom. Good evening, Council, Mayor. Um, I wasn't going to say anything, but I, I couldn't hold it back anymore. I've talked twice about this water and sewer bill that you imposed upon it. I always thought the council was for the people. But we've had our general meeting for our HOA, and it cost us approximately $10,000 out of our reserve money to pay our, our sewer and water bill before the owners could pay the bill. If you had waited until the 1st of April for the, the, the initial bill to go into effect, we wouldn't have spent any of our reserve money. Most HOAs don't have a lot of reserve, and it did put a damper into ours as some projects that we wanted to do. Now, on a happier note, I went to Hawaii. I didn't get any contributions from you folks. But anyhow, they had an, an interesting thing. We stayed at the outrigger at Kona, and on the roads, uh, when they want you to slow down, they don't put up a sign. They have these white streaks across the road, and at the end of the white streaks is a triangle. And what that does, it warns you, because there's going to be a bump right ahead there. You better slow down or you're going to go bang, bang down the road. This one little road uh, near the outrigger probably had four of them. It was a very short road, but people would go there to watch the, the manta rays feed at night. So it was a big attraction, and they had a real problem with people driving too fast. I know we don't want to do that in the city, but there might be some areas that we have a lot of heavy traffic. This is a very understandable, you go too fast, you're going to hit, just like at, at the uh, Walmart out there, they got some bumps out there that rattle your car. And again, I thank you for your service, but you disappointed me on the water and sewer bill. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Wisdom. Any other citizens for call to the public? Yes, sir, make your way out. Uh, my name is Doug Carr, and I'm with the Pickleball Association, or not with, but I'm the ambassador. And uh, next month, we're going to have our pickleball tournament, and there's going to be over 240 uh, uh, people playing this year. And last year, we only had 130, because now we have 16 courts. So it's going to be uh, pretty impressive this uh, next tournament. Uh, come out and enjoy uh, what I'm here for is to ask for $25,000, $30,000. Uh, I hate to because a clothes closet could use that money. Uh, but we need lights. And you guys have your retreat next week. Uh, hopefully you guys can discuss that. The association has put in almost $700,000 to the pickleball courts up there. And we have 50000 that we want to give to the city, or plus, uh, to put lights up. So we'd like to get these lights up. I've been asking for them uh, for about two years now. So hopefully we can get them done soon. And thanks for your time. And, Thank you. Uh, good luck at the retreat. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Would anyone else like to make their way to the podium? Alrighty, seeing none, we'll close the call of public. Uh, next item on the agenda is current events. Do any of the council members have any current events they'd like to update us on? Yeah. Vice Mayor, I do. Yes. I just uh, left the chamber meeting and I, they are expanding on their construction, um, which is great kind of taken over the construction association that we had in the past. The one thing they had to do is postpone their first, another one of their construction meetings. So they had to postpone it to February 22nd. Please reach out to the chamber if you want more information. Also, the Winterfest is coming up in February. If you want more information, contact the chamber. And I thought this was kind of exciting. I wanted to give you guys a little heads up, but the they're having a mystery dinner on St. Patrick's Day, which is March 17th. And it's going to be based on who killed St. Patrick. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's kind of fun. So anyways, um, Arizona at Work has expanded upon their apprenticeship programs. I had a great meeting at the Gateway Community College in Phoenix where they are um, – launching new trade schools for the kids. I also um, got to participate in a new marketing campaign. And I think it's kind of fun. I love to tell people that we are now targeting children and we're targeting them uh, through marketing and advertisement to make trade schools sexy again. So that's good stuff. I'm super happy to see that launching. Uh, Monday the 29th, uh, RTAC will be having their legislative meeting with uh, about the appropriation bill that's coming up here pretty soon. So that's um, Monday the 29th. And, oh, uh, legislators informed me at the... Gateway Community College convening that they are working on a youth internship for kids under the age of 18. We are actually getting um, kids certified in welding at the age of 16, but they can't add it, um, internships until they're 18. So hopefully legislation continues to move forward on that. Let's all keep an eye on it and um, get these kids back to work. You know, thanks. Thank you. Uh, I also have a quick update for you guys. Uh, PED had been, uh, you know, when we did our, our forecast for our budget for the nomadic workspace, um, you know, we budgeted a, a slow growth, um, even budgeted kind of a, a net loss for the year, but they're already in the black, already surpassing their expectations. It's been wildly successful to a point I wish I mentioned last time that they are looking to, uh, to expand the number of um, office spaces that they have. So things are going great there, even to the point where Kingman is now looking to uh, to model after what we uh, the nice work that the PED has been doing in our town. So kudos to the Partnership for Economic Development. James and his team down there are doing a great job. And that's it for me. Anybody else? All righty. Uh, next, we have uh, any council members have any future discussion items? Seeing none, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn for the world's fastest meeting. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, thank you. Uh, we do have future meetings. Uh, Wednesday, January 31st is our planning session, which was mentioned earlier, starting at 8.30 a.m. Uh, Tuesday, February 13th at 5.30 p.m. is our regular meeting. And Tuesday, February 27th at 5.30 p.m. is another regular meeting. Uh, thank you so much. Entertain a motion. Thank you.